It's going down to the wire. It's the final day of the Football League season and there's still so much to play for. Who will join Wolves in the Premier League? Reading, Birmingham and Sheffield United all believe this is their moment. And there are playoff places to be won and relegation issues to be decided. Coming up on the Football League show. First on the show this week, a Monday match with real significance at both ends of the championship. Norwich versus Reading. A win for the Royals would give them a shot at the automatic promotion place and would make survival a long shot for the home team. Commentary from Jim Proudfoot. So another set-piece opportunity for Norwich. Sammy Klingen orchestrating it. It's in from the Ulster, and it's just wide. They scored at Ipswich last weekend, and this was a really good attempt. Poor clearance from Cissé, Klinger, Russell, Cardi. Well, it was optimistic, but it was dipping all the time, and it didn't clear Hanneman's bar by much. An appreciative round of applause from the Canaries faithful. And Steve Copper won this division in 2006. He led Reading to a 33-game unbeaten run. hard season in the championship each club has played 45 games but the race for the Premier League will go down to the final 90 minutes Wolves are up Birmingham will join them if they win their last game if the Blues slip up Reading or Sheffield United can overtake them and of course the fixture list has thrown up an enticing final match into the equation Do you know we've got last game of the season Birmingham home. It wouldn't have mattered until Birmingham wasted a 1-0 lead against Preston last weekend that would have put their promotion beyond doubt. It's been an anxious final three months of the season for the Birmingham manager. I think the spirit and the character and determination of the team has shown through this season. I don't think they've played particularly well with great flair. We have at times played well but not consistently enough for my liking. Reading had rivaled Wolves and Birmingham in the top three until their recent demise. But Coppel's Royals are back in the mix after Monday's win. Steve's been very shrewd in the market. He's built a good team. And out of the three teams, they definitely have the most experience in this type of situation. When the two teams met earlier in the season, it was Reading who ran out 3-1 winners. A repeat of that result gives Reading the chance to overtake the Blues on goal difference, depending on results elsewhere. Well, if anybody else dives into it, it's going to be a nightmare. While also holding out for a top two finish are Sheffield United, promoted if Birmingham lose and they win at Crystal Palace, managed by their former boss, Neil Warnock. So Birmingham had control of their own destiny at the Medeski Stadium. Tony Gubber 
Watch that match. But first to Selhurst Park, seven and a half thousand fans had made the trip from South Yorkshire to cheer on the Blades. Your commentator is Kevin Keatings. Cottrell with the corner here for Sheffield United. Hitter on, it's a good one, and Spironi made a very good save. He couldn't have had a very good view of this, the Palace goalkeeper. And he reacted really well, the Argentinian. Sheffield United almost going in front here, David Cottrell. All his own work. But how had things started at Reading? Phillips lays it down. Oh, it's gone through, Hanneman! He's looking for an offside flag, but he's not going to get it. And Fahey has put Birmingham ahead with just over 18 minutes played. Oh, well, that's good, good play. Now, Kevin Phillips with a glorious chance. This time, Hanneman kept his legs closed and saved it with his knees. Back to South London, where Sheffield United needed a goal. McCarthy. Down for Pucci. It's got a drop here now for Dance. He was onside, and what a chance for Neil Dance. Sheffield United, automatic promotion hopes. Montgomery. Chest off is a good one, a terrific save by Speroni to deny Jamie Ward. Oh. Sheffield United's clearest opportunity by far. Here's Cotter. Cross. It is a good one, and Speroni excels again. Greg Halford's header would have been looping in, but for the outstretched arm of Speroni. Time was running out. Back to the Medeski. There's Jerome to Damian Johnson. Oh, he's, well, the flag has stayed down. And Birmingham lead by two goals to nil, and Reading stop playing. Is that the goal that puts Birmingham in the Premier League? Kevin Phillips, the arch goal poacher. 35 years of age, Kevin Phillips. That was his 246th career goal, and Reading need to score three. Oh, and they've got one back straight away. And it's Matajowski. Birmingham celebrations are stifled in an instant. What a game we have on. As it opened up here. Oh, great strike and a good save. And it was Matajowski again. And then a push. Appeals for penalty. Not given. O'Connor for Birmingham, carrying the ball into the, the Reading half. Oh, he smacked it against the bottom of the post. Gary O'Connor, who scored seven this season for Birmingham, with a right foot shot that had Hanneman beaten, and that would have wrapped it up. Time is against them, only a little over a minute left here. Played in by the goalkeeper, Kenny, the header off the post! Chris Morgan, so close there for Sheffield United. A minute left here and a minute left at the Medeski Stadium. Sheffield United need a goal, they need a Reading goal. Can it all turn around in 60 seconds? And there are handshakes between Alex McLeish and Steve Koppel. Roy Aitken signalling to the referee, come on, it's all up. The game at Crystal Palace. 
still going on, but it's still nil-nil, and there's the final whistle. But Birmingham are up. They are promoted back to the Premier League. They've done it the hard way. Birmingham were able to hold on and see out the 2-1 victory that confirms they are back in the Premier League. There was a little part of me thinking, have we blown it? We, we, we're going to lose down at Reading because they're a formidable side. And uh, I thought, you know, many, how many cracks at the cherry are you going to get? Today we took care of it because, uh, would, <laughs> you know, God forbid the playoffs. By the time the full-time whistle went at Selhurst Park, Sheffield United knew their fate. Warnock's Eagles had refused to budge, but the score was irrelevant. United will have to go through the playoffs if they're to play Premier League football next season. We could have won 10-0, we wouldn't have gone up today. But the lads give it everything, you know what I mean? And uh, Spironi, to be fair, is my man of the match. He made save after save. And it opened us a little bit as well to get on the court on the counter-attack. But uh, overall, you know, I thought we did a terrific performance today, so I'm not complaining at all. There were still playoff places up for grabs going into Sunday's games. Burnley could confirm theirs with a win against Bristol City and were awarded a penalty when Jamie McAllister pushed Wade Elliott. Graham Alexander put his team ahead just before the break. Into first half injury time and City failed to clear a corner. Elliott made them pay with a fine finish. After the break, the home side pushed to extend their lead and make safe their top six place. Bradley Orr's handball helped the Clarets cause. Step forward, Alexander once again. Joey Goodjonsson came on as a late sub for Burnley and the Icelandic midfielder reacted quickest when Chris Eagle's shot was saved. So Owen Coyle's side are into the playoffs. We're thrilled. I mean, uh, we'll work ever so hard. Not just today. I mean, it's been a culmination of, of ten, ten months hard graft. Uh, I think the players showed their style today. They showed their qualities uh, against a very good Bristol City side. The final playoff place would go to Cardiff if they could get a point at Sheffield Wednesday. Roger Johnson and then Darren Purse went close to putting the Bluebirds ahead. Cardiff hadn't won in their three games going into this final day and they were beaten again thanks to a great Jermaine Johnson strike. So David Jones' team now had to hope results went their way elsewhere. Preston could take advantage if they beat QPR and Rangers' Casper Gorks gifted the Lily Whites a first-half lead. John Parkin with the goal. After the break, Preston suffered a blow at the hands of one of their former players, Patrick Ajemang, showing little sentiment against his former club. News of Sheffield Wednesday's goal against Preston's rivals Cardiff had just filtered through to Deepdale when North End made another breakthrough. Sean St. Ledger with the goal that put his team in the driving seat. Deep into injury time, Matthew Connolly almost equalised for the R's. To Preston's delight and Cardiff's despair, it was the final kick of the game. And with four consecutive wins, Preston claimed an unlikely place in the playoffs. The, the thing that I did impressed on the lads all week was that we had to do our job. And, and if other results went our way, fantastic. If they didn't, well, we'd had a good season overall. So, um, delighted, obviously, the way the results went. Um, and we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Cardiff's terrible end to the season saw them drop out of the top six on the final day on goals scored. Their 6 0 defeat at the hands of Preston two weeks ago had real significance. To get so close is, is a gut wrencher for everybody. Even like today, you know, three things have got to go against you, and three things went against us. And it's, that's hard to swallow, but uh, it was in our hands, and unfortunately, we didn't take that chance. Still to come, who's going down? Norwich and Barnsley play for their championship lives. And all the big movers from Leagues 1 and 2.
Now to relegation matters. Nottingham Forest and Plymouth were relieved to see Norwich lose on Monday. That result secured their championship status for next year. Going into the final day, Barnsley could guarantee their survival with a point at Plymouth. Norwich needed an Argyle win and a victory at relegated Charlton. Norwich manager Brian Gunn had experienced relegation from the Premier League with Norwich in 1995. The club hadn't played third-tier football since 1960 and needed to cook up a last-day miracle to avoid that fate. But the Norfolk team were in trouble from as early as the ninth minute at Charlton. Lloyd Sam setting up Mickey Bailey. Dion Burton had only scored twice for Charlton since signing from Sheffield Wednesday in November. But he pounced on David Marshall's error to put more pressure on Norwich. Burton was on target again from Mickey Bailey's cross as the already doomed addicts looked to drag the stunned Canaries into League One with them. Norwich were given the faintest glimmer of hope on the stroke of half-time. Alan Lee rose well to pull a goal back. 3-1 now. But Charlton have shown their best form since they were consigned to the drop. Sam again tormented the Norwich back line. And Burton was on hand for his hat-trick. Northern Irish midfielder Sammy Klingen has scored some vital goals in recent weeks that had given Norwich a chance of beating the drop. But his free kick on the hour was the final moment of defiance by a team who knew that it was on its way down. Norwich, like Charlton and Southampton, so recently in the Premier League, drop into League One. A little bit of soul searching needs to be done by myself and uh, the players I've just spoken to in the dressing room there. Um, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's the most horrible experience in football, being relegated. Barnsley had gone into their match at Plymouth needing a point. Gary Sawyer put the home team in front. And Plymouth so nearly went two up. Adam Judge with the shot. It was so close. But as Norwich began to fall apart at the Valley, the Tykes took control of their own destiny. Adam Hamill with the equaliser. And after the break, Barnsley's Jamaican international winger, Jamal Campbell-Rice, was on target for his ninth of the season to make it a day to remember for those who had travelled to the southwest from Yorkshire. Battling Barnsley stay in the championship for another season. Whatever was going on elsewhere at uh, Charlton and Norwich uh, was incidental. We had to come down here and get a result and you know, I'm proud of every player. And uh, it was important that we stayed in this division. Uh, I always believed and I said for the last six to eight weeks that we'll stay in this division and, uh, and that's what we've done. Champions Wolves signed off from the Football League with a home game against Doncaster. Defender Richard Stearman guided the ball in for his only goal of the season. 1-0, and Wolves fittingly celebrating a win. Club captain Jody Craddock lifted the championship trophy. The old gold returning to the top flight for the first time since 2004. With Nottingham Forest safe and Southampton's relegation confirmed, there was only pride to play for at the city ground. And it was the League One bound Saints who took the lead. Bradley Wright Phillips with the goal. But that was all the luck they would get as Forrest struck back in style. Joe Garner's great strike crowning an impressive season for the 21 year old. Luke Chambers converted a Chris Cohen corner to put the home side ahead with three minutes to go. And as the seconds ticked down, Forrest still had time to add a third. Rob Earnshaw making sure their season finished on a high. But another defeat to round off Southampton's miserable campaign. 
At Portman Road, new Ipswich manager Roy Keane took charge of his first game in front of the home fans and they were treated to an entertaining game against Coventry. Tottenham loney Giovanni Dos Santos showed his class to break the deadlock. Keane got off to a winning start at Cardiff last week and Ipswich were on target again against the Sky Blues thanks to a slice of luck. John Stead's shot rebounding to Pablo Cunago. Ipswich weren't to have it all their own way. In the second half, Clinton Morrison pulled one back for Coventry. But it wasn't enough. 2-1 the final score. Watford and Derby both changed managers in seasons of disappointment, but having put their problems behind them, the Hornets enjoyed the end-of-season sunshine. Joby McEnough with their first goal. Before the half-hour, the home side were two up after Tamas Priskin and Adrian Mariapa failed. Southampton loanee Gregor Rashak found the net. Tommy Smith has been Watford's ray of light in a disappointing season, so it was fitting the midfielder supplied Rashak for his second. Watford cruising at the break, 3-0 up. There was a slight sting in the tail for the Hornets. Midfielder John Eustace, on loan at Derby from Watford, scored in the second half. But 3-1 the way it finished. Swansea's impressive debut championship season came to a disappointing end against Blackpool. The Tangerines' DJ Campbell scoring the only goal of the game to win it for the Seasiders. So Wolves and Birmingham will play Premier League football next season. Preston snatched the final playoff place because they scored one more goal than Cardiff. Norwich, Southampton and Charlton all failed in their bids to beat the drop. And the Saints will start with a 10-point penalty next year in League One. In League One, Scunthorpe and Tranmere faced off for the final place in the playoffs. Two points divided the sides at kickoff. So when Tranmere's Craig Curran opened the scoring, it was advantage to the team from the Wirral. But Tranmere were down to ten men in the dying seconds of the game. Gareth Eds, given his marching orders by referee Steve Tanner for a second bookable offence. And from the resulting free kick, Scunthorpe captain Cliff Byrne equalised for the iron. A point enough for Nigel Adkins' side to snatch the final playoff place. Ten years ago, Carlisle keeper Jimmy Glass scored an injury time to rescue the club from relegation out of the Football League. They needed another great escape against Millwall. And veteran Graham Kavanagh's 25-yarder was a good start. Carlisle also needed Leeds to beat Northampton. The Whites didn't disappoint. So survival was guaranteed by Paul Thurwell's volley. 2-0 and League One football for another season at Brunson Park. Leicester and Peterborough were two leagues apart a year ago, but they will play championship football next year. Scunthorpe have dramatically made it into the playoffs. Carlisle's final day win keeps them in League One at the expense of Northampton, who join Crewe, Cheltenham and Hereford in League Two next season. In League Two, Exeter were hoping for a second successive promotion. They had to beat Rotherham and went ahead through Richard Logan on 71 minutes. There was still time for further drama when Rotherham's Dale Tung hauled down Craig McAllister. Tung seeing red and conceding a penalty. Stuart Fleetwood should have made it 2-0. It didn't matter though, Exeter got the win they needed to reach League One. Wickham lost at home to Notts County, but have scraped into the final promotion place thanks to a marginally superior goal difference to Berry, who beats Accrington. Chester and Luton drop out of the Football League. 
They'll be replaced by Burton and either Cambridge or Torquay who will play off for the second place. It's been a final day of tension, heartache and joy. But Birmingham are the weekend's big winners, having secured a return to the Premier League along with Wolves. Now it's a question of who can join them. Preston play Sheffield United and Burnley face Reading in the Championship playoff semi-finals. And we'll have all the playoff action from all three leagues over the coming weeks, right here on the Football League Show.